Mobile phone video is powerful because it's easy. You've already got a mobile device in your pocket right now and your clients don't need you to have a big, expensive, fancy camera. What they need is for you to deliver your message consistently and mobile phone video makes that possible. So today I'm gonna to show you my process for shooting great looking YouTube videos right from your mobile phone that your customers and your clients will love. Let's get started, I'm Owen Video. Owen Video! Welcome to the channel. When it comes to shooting video with your mobile device, there are a few key components that you need to keep in mind. Because it's easy to grab your device anywhere you are and start filming a video, and I want you to have that kind of creative freedom, so if you're at a conference or maybe outside and inspiration strikes you, I want you to be ready to film on your mobile device so that you can quickly set up a mobile phone shooting area and make a great video on a regular basis. For example, I'm sitting at my workstation right down here and I can easily grab my tabletop tripod, connect my mobile device and instantly film a great looking video when a client sends me an email or after I listen to a podcast and I feel really inspired. So let's review some of the key tools that you're gonna need. The first is a tripod. I recommend that you buy two different types of tripods. Number one is gonna be your full size tripod. This one's about 60 inches and I keep this in my car with me at all times. Truth be told, I have three of these in my house so I can grab one from any location and they're only $20 on Amazon. This type of tripod is ideal if you're standing up like at work and you've got a stand up desk or if you have a higher chair, like I'm sitting on a bar stool chair right now and I can easily put my mobile device right here on this tripod, turn my chair towards it and be in a place where I'm eye level with the camera and that's the biggest tip. So whether you're shooting on your tabletop tripod or whether you're shooting on your full size tripod, you wanna get the camera length as equal to your eyes as possible. You'll notice that a lot of poor quality video from mobile device comes from weird angles where the phone is lower and kind of looking up at you so it makes the audience feel small. We're gonna talk about some more of those things in just a second, but it all starts with the tripod. Now, the tabletop tripod that I recommend is called the SwitchPod. And not only is it the best tabletop tripod out there, but it has a few other features, like the three legs combine into one to create an easy to hold, handheld sort of gimbal type of device. And this is great for filming mobile phone footage on the go, also for filming B-roll for your videos if that's something that you wanna do. It's easy to handle and very lightweight. The second thing that you need to consider is the mobile phone tripod adapter. And this will actually screw on top of your tabletop tripod or it will screw on top of your full size tripod. And what this does is it allows you to hold your mobile device. See, the tripod won't do that on its own. You've, you've got to connect an adapter to it that will hold your mobile phone vertical or widescreen and and although we use a tripod for our YouTube shorts and for our Instagram reels largely what I'm talking about here today is shooting full long form YouTube videos in landscape mode so get a tripod adapter that easily switches your phone from vertical to widescreen some tripods have it built in some don't be careful because you're going to need that now, the next thing that you need for high quality mobile phone shooting is a microphone. And this can be one of the most challenging aspects of shooting with a mobile phone. So whether you have iPhone or a Google phone or, or something else that's in between, I want to introduce you to a couple different microphones that'll do really well. The first is the video mic by Rode, and it's a very small plug in device that will go directly into your mobile phone. There's plenty of, of similar brands that will work for your Google device as well. But with this device, you plug it directly into your mobile phone and it gives you a boom mic that will give you better audio than the phone by itself. This is what the audio sounds like from the Rode plug-in mic as it's connected to my iPhone. This allows you to record video at a distance. Now, is it gonna give you high quality sound at 30 feet away? No it won't and you may need to do that from time to time so the second mic that i want to introduce you to is called the sabintech mic 
Now the Sabintech mic is a wireless Bluetooth mic that will work with any phone. I've been using this mic for years. In fact, the reason we don't have it with us here today is because I was just using it yesterday and it's still wrapped up with all that gear. But this mic clips right onto your shirt or your jacket and will record high quality audio up to 30 feet away. This means you could film your keynote speeches. It also means that you can film interviews. This is a really valuable microphone. But whether you get the Sabintech or the Rode or even something that wires in, you are going to need a microphone one way or the other. I do not recommend filming mobile phone video with the mobile phone base audio. Now, if you're at a conference and something big happens and you wanna go live and you wanna do that, by all means, make that exception. But for your standard mobile phone video shooting set, you want to have a high quality microphone. Remember, audio is 50% of the video viewing experience and people will watch a bad video if the audio is okay, but they won't watch a great video, a life-changing video if the audio is terrible. Next, let's talk about lighting. And lighting is a sensitive topic because if you have too much light, then you'll look blown out. And if you have too little light, well, then you just look a little scary. I have a certain set of skills. Now, there's plenty of different lights available on Amazon, but 99% of them will be a nuisance. They'll be a pain for you. So I'm just gonna tell you what light you should get. First of all, the best light possible is natural daylight as it comes through the window. So if you are in a place where you can film in front of a window, then that is gonna be my first recommendation. However, there's gonna be a lot of you that can't film in front of a window because in the background, you've got a big kitchen mess and a laundry pile and all the different things that come with working from home. Or you might be in a situation like me where there are no windows in this room. And even those of you that have a perfect window scenario, you may want to shoot at night or you may want to shoot on rainy days. So it's a good idea to have a backup lighting system ready to go. Now, a couple years ago, these big box lights were the most popular thing and they're still top sellers on Amazon. Do not buy these big old honking lights. They are a nuisance, they will break, there's a lot of moving parts, you have to put them together. I've bought these things in the past and you might have six or seven light bulbs in there which start to kind of like make a buzzing sound or one light bulb goes off and it throws the whole thing out. Plus they take a whole lot of room in your house. So I recommend buying the 18 inch ring light by Newer. And there's a lot of different brands that you can buy from. If you want one that's more expensive, feel free. But we recommend the 18 inch over the smaller sizes because the smaller sizes did not produce enough light. We bought one of these smaller ones and it didn't work for us. Another great feature of the 18 inch newer ring light is there's no light bulbs. It's all LEDs and the power lasts forever. Now you might be tempted to buy a small portable battery powered light like this Lytra or this light here. While these pack a powerful punch and they're great for traveling, they're great for having on the go, I wouldn't recommend it for your home studio system because you don't wanna run out of battery power. The 18 inch newer lights plug into the wall. They're very, very thin. They store really easy. Plus the profile and footprint of the newer is slim line and trim. It doesn't take up a lot of space. You can easily store this and bring it out whenever you need to use it. So now that you have all the tools of a professional mobile video shooting station, we need to talk about the specifics of shooting with mobile phone. I wanna talk first about the framing and then I wanna talk about file management. Framing your video means how you appear on screen. This is the top of the frame, these are the sides of the frame, and this is the bottom of the frame. Make sense? Let me show you how to frame yourself on a mobile device. The first thing I wanna talk about is the rule of thirds. And this is how we should see the screen as divided into these six boxes where we have the middle, but we also have the right side and we have the left side. As a rule of thumb with mobile phone video, you're gonna to wanna to position yourself as close to the middle of the screen as possible. Now, this is a really good framing, but what you also wanna watch out for is that the space above your head roughly fits two fingers, okay? We call this headroom. 
and you don't wanna have too much headroom because it makes you look small on the screen. Here's what I mean. I'm gonna lower my chair a little bit over here and, and or back away and you'll see that now way more than two fingers, it's almost like two full hands of, of, of headroom, even more exist and it makes me the smallest thing on screen. Now, conversely, you also don't want to do the thing where you're way too close in and your forehead, your chin is kind of getting cut off in the frame. This happens a lot when you hold the mobile phone in your hand and it really makes the viewer feel squished and uncomfortable. It's not the best place for them to be receiving information from you. So start by framing yourself in the middle of the screen, unless you want to do a newscaster thing like this or like this. And this is the second part of framing that we call the newscaster frame. Now, notice that I've left a big bunch of space over here where I can show graphics, or maybe I could add some text. In our company, we've even created a graphic called a half screen graphic that we use for displaying text, graphics, and other educational overlays. This type of framing positions you on the left or right hand side of the video while allowing plenty of what's called look room for you to display secondary graphics and educational tools. This may require more editing, but it also might be the perfect look for your videos. Once you've framed yourself in the mobile camera, you're ready to film your videos. And we've created a very simple five-step process for knowing exactly what to say on camera and when to say it. Now, we're not gonna cover that in this video today, but I did make another link and I've linked to it up above. You can click on that as soon as this video is over. For now, I wanna pretend that you've already filmed your video and you're ready to either publish it to YouTube or you wanna give it to your editor. Let's talk about those options right now. If you're gonna upload this video directly to YouTube with minimal editing, here's the process. I want you to download a free app called InShot, and this will work on iPhone or Google Play. InShot is a wonderfully simple video editor with tons of great features that are available for free. But for just $14.99 per year, you can get access to even more features that make editing a cinch. I teach my clients how to edit with InShot. Now, for most of you that are experienced speaking on video, you're not going to need to edit too much, but you'll definitely need to trim off the very beginning and you might need to trim off the end of your video and that's very simple to do in InShot. But InShot also allows you to add text, images and music to your videos if you want to go into more depth. We're doing an entire series on how to use InShot, so be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like that. Now, once you've trimmed your video, it's ready to upload to YouTube. So you simply open up the YouTube app, click on create, and upload your video and it's ready to be published. So that's a perfect solution for the do-it-yourself video creator. But what if you're like me and you've actually hired a video editing team to edit your videos for you? Mobile phone video is perfect for that scenario because you can record your video into the mobile phone and then send it to your editor where they can add B-roll, some exciting transitions, and other features that make the video more impactful. Let's take a look at that process. So imagine, if you will, that you've just finished filming the video and you're ready to upload this and send it to your editor. Here's what you're gonna do. The first thing I want you to know is that we use Dropbox, not Google Drive. We don't use WeTransfer. We use Dropbox because it is designed for video creation and media files. So inside of your Google Drive, create a folder called One Mobile Footage. And the reason that we put the number one in front of that folder title is so that it always appears on the top of all your other folders. Now that you've created the folder, you're gonna go into that folder and click on the Upload Photos button. Then you're gonna select all the video files that you recorded that day, but you're only gonna pick them one video at a time. So if you did one video and it's on one file, upload that one. If you filmed one video, but it came out to two or three files, upload all three at a time and then upload the other footage in just a minute. I'm gonna show you why. Because with Dropbox, you'll select the footage, 
and then it will give you the option to rename all the files. This is so helpful. You're gonna rename all the files after the title of the video so that when your editor goes inside, he can see all the video files that you shot on your mobile device organized by the title name. So you're gonna rename the title and then click upload. Then you're gonna upload the rest of your video footage so that it exists in Dropbox. But here's a big point. Don't close down Dropbox until all the video files have finished uploading. What I'll do is I'll actually go into my phone settings and turn off the screensaver so that Dropbox just uploads. It might take 10 or 15 minutes, but then I can reuse my phone and I don't have to wake up the next day to an angry email from my editor who says, hey, I don't have all your files in this folder. Just take the 15 minutes right now before you end your day of filming, upload all that footage to Dropbox and email it to your editor so that she's got all the files she needs to make your video perfect. Okay, what questions do you have that I haven't answered? please ask me in the comment section below. Otherwise, you are ready to start filming high quality video on your mobile phone. We could talk all day about filters and editing and camera effects, and we, we've covered that on our channel. But I want you to know that if you're a brand or a creator with a message that people need to hear, that you should feel comfortable shooting on your mobile device without feeling the need for a big, expensive, fancy camera. Because with mobile phone videos, you can shoot videos fast and your audience will resonate. Now, if you wanna learn more about what to say and how to shoot your mobile phone video in a way that will save time and make you feel confident about the content, then watch the video that's next on your screen right now. Just give it a little tap. I'll see you there for another training. I'm Owen Video and I can't wait.